Welcome to uh, Body Remastered. On this YouTube video, we're going to be talking about one of my favourite topics, a, the rotator cuff, and the importance, and I think the, the actual secret power of the rotator cuff muscles. Um, because I can tell you now, I will not be, I've got anywhere in my journey in muscle building or strength training um, if I didn't look after my rotator cuffs. And I was very fortunate to recognise the importance of the rotator cuffs early on um, in my training journey. And I want to you know, express the same information to you so that you don't miss out on such such important muscles and joints uh, that may not seem important, but actually they're intrinsic to the, the longevity of your overall training. Um, so you, you must not miss out on, you know, important exercises on the rotator cuff muscles. So this video, we'll talk about rotator cuffs, talk about a little bit of the science, but really more about the training and the things to avoid, etc. Uh, any pitfalls that I've learned. Before we go any further, just a reminder that the equivalent blog is uh, down at the, at the bottom of this video, so please check that out at uh, bodyremastered.com where you can find out some uh, some great blogs and materials and articles that we have. And subscribe to Remastered Unlocked uh, where we give you some f free resources. And we're uploading uh, new resources every week uh, to our subscribers and we listen to, to, we listen to you in terms of what, of what you're looking for. Um, so do, do that and, and please subscribe to our, to our channel, um, as we said we got new videos every day um, all about helping you to build strength and tone um, your body and uh, really really understand the true potential of, of muscle. So let's get straight to um, the rotator cuff and the importance. If we just look at the shoulder joint first, um, it's really unique um, and complex. And I'm actually going to say the shoulder complex itself, which is, consists of the clavicle, the humerus and the scapula um, actually consists of four joints and five linked bone groups, all which together gives it, you know, a very, uh, a, a very free range of motion. And the joint in itself is unstable; it needs to be unstable to allow um, a great range of motion that you experience with a uh, special uh, shoulder joint. But of course, because of the fact that it's free moving. Um, it, you know, it needs a lot of ligaments, tendons, and muscles to keep the joint in its place. And that's what makes it a, a complicated, um, even though it's unique, a complicated joint. Um, and you have to look after it because you, you're always, you'll be surprised how much you're using your shoulders in exercises, uh, either directly or indirectly. And you need to really uh, make sure that um, you're looking after the internal ligaments and tendons um, because otherwise, you know, you would have issues potentially. We'll talk about that when you're carrying out heavy lifting, especially overhead lifting, etc. Of course, to carry out all these types of uh, range of motions of the shoulder joint, you need uh, the the rotator cuff muscles. So remember, the stronger the you know the tendons and the rotator cuff muscles are, um, then the more the height, the longer the longevity of your training, the more stable and healthier. Your overall muscles will be. So let's just quickly look at those four rotator cuff muscles without getting bogged down in the science because it's not what this video is about. Uh, but there's four rotator cuff muscles. There's, and I'll try and get this right now. Uh, there's the infraspinatus, there's a supraspinatus, there's a teres minor, and there's a subscapularis. So those are the four types of rotator cuffs and they all play a part in um, rotator cuff training. So let's talk about these rotator cuff muscles slightly, just to understand what are they primarily um, used for in the function of the of the shoulder mobility. So the first one's a supraspinatus, um, and that really does support generally primarily the abduction movements. So you know, as I said, abduction away from the body, um, and that's primarily what it's for. The infraspinatus, on the other hand, really supports external rotation. We spoke about before, away from the body. Um, in many different angles. So the next one is the teres minor, um, which is although one of the smaller uh, rotator cuff muscles, this also supports um, external uh, rotation of the shoulder. And then the final one, the subscapularis, um, which is actually the largest and strongest of the internal rotator cuff muscles, uh, tends to support internal rotation um, quite a lot, but, but really does support all, all, all the types of rotation um, of the shoulder joint. So in essence, um, these four rotator cuff muscles attach onto the scapula, um, which is in essence your shoulder blade, which then forms a joint with your humerus, which is the upper arm 
uh, bone. So the scapula is like a, the, a platform for uh, your uh, rotator cuff muscles. Now we can, we could go on forever in terms of the anatomy of the of the rotator cuff muscles, but I don't think that's why you, you join the video. Uh, one other interesting thing before we move on um, about um, the shoulder joint and this ball and socket joint, as opposed to some other um, uh, ball and socket joints, is that there's actually a large space uh, between the scapula and the humerus, uh, and that space is known as the glenoid fossa, um, and that's Obviously, that's important because it allows for uh, the, the, the higher range of motion of the shoulder joint, but it also increases the chance of dislocation, uh, as you know, typical for a shoulder. Let's just talk a little bit about injury um, of the rotator cuff and what it actually means. As I said, it, any type of injury of the rotator cuff or dysfunction of the rotator cuff can be really debilitating, um, and you really don't realize how debilitating it can be unless you've had a proper problem. And you know, Natural wear and tear, um, shoulder joint, most people probably have had some degree of, um, of injury or impingement, I'll talk about that, of the, of the shoulder joint. Um, you know, it's important, that, you know, and even basic tasks like pouring a can of drink uh, can be painful because you're, you know, you're mimicking certain rotations uh, due to the damages of the rotator cuff or, or the tendons. Um, and it can vary in terms of the, the type of damage. We can have a more basic type of damage where it's a strain, where you've actually stretched um, the fibrous uh, tissue of the, of, the, of, the, of the rotator cuff muscle or tendons. Um, uh, or you can have an actual tear of the, of the rotator cuff uh, muscles, which is more serious. Of course, you, know, you can have a minor tear or you can have a full tear of a rotator cuff muscle, and obviously both of those types um, have different types of uh, injury implications as well. There's another interesting injury uh, known as shoulder impingement. Um, in essence what happens there is the tendon, um, tendon actually becomes inflamed and the inflammation of the tendons around the rotator cuff muscles actually fills up space uh, within the shoulder joint and this actually causes sometimes rubbing against tissue or even bone uh, when you move your shoulder around. And shoulder impingement is really important because it's one of the biggest issues that um, uh, you know, uh, weightlifters can face, especially when you're, you know, you're lifting overhead or you're trying to build your shoulders. Um, if you're not looking after your rotator cuff, shoulder impingement is one of the biggest things that can uh, cause you major setbacks in, in your overall healthiness of the shoulder joint. Um, and that's, that's why we're going to particularly concentrate on that because um, it's, a, it's, it's a thing we see all the time. Now, some people are actually predisposed to shoulder impingement more than others. Uh, and some people develop it over time um, due to the wear and tear uh, nature of maybe incorrect lifting um, or not creating your training plan intelligent enough, um, you know, too much heavy lifting, etc., too much on one type of muscle group, lots of different things can cause it. But also particularly the wrong types of exercises, and we'll touch on that um, in a second. So let's get straight to discussing some of the exercises that really can be useful in preventing um, from rotator cuff injuries in the first place, uh, whether it be shoulder impingement or any strain or tear of uh, the rotator cuffs. Let's talk about the first exercise, very interesting, is the overhead shoulder press, and it's one of my absolute favorites, and I would not have gained success on my overall fitness journey without that movement. And there's so many variations, it's a, it's a fantastic movement of overall vertical strength. Um, and it's a fallacy to think, and you see this a lot sometimes, that you know, if you carry out things like military presses or you know any type of overhead press, you're going to damage your rotator cuff muscles. You're going to damage your shoulder joint. It's just not true. Um, but what can happen, as I said, if you if you carry out those movements incorrectly, poor techniques, poor form, um, incorrect training programs as well. You know, how often do you do you implement uh, shoulder? Uh, pressing movements, what other exercises do you before and after, how much rest do you get, all of that plays a part in your overall shoulder health. Um, but other than that, you know, as long as it's executed correctly, absolutely shoulder, shoulder pressing movements are actually healthy, they can strengthen your rotator cuff muscles and your overall shoulder joint, um, so they're key. So let's, look, let's break down some of those issues with the, the uh, you know, shoulder pressing uh, movements. The first one is orientation. The orientation of your hands uh, and, and the range of motion in which you're moving the weight up. Um, you know, we're not robots. Um, our, our actual skeletal structure is actually curved 
Um, you know, we don't, every person's different, we don't have the same skeletal structure. Um, and so, you know, doing things like directly upwards or directly lateral, etc., aren't healthy for, for the joints. And so what, what's actually the right thing to do when you're, when you're looking at overhead pressing of any kind is actually to follow the, the natural scapular plane, your scapular plane, whether that may be, um, rather than you know, directly being lateral or, or two inwards, etc., which puts the, the, the shoulders in a very compromised uh, position. And actually this, this process of you know, following the natural line of the scapula um, is known as scapula. Um, in which you are moving your shoulders about 30 to 45 degrees um, relative to your body so that the humerus of the upper arm is moving in line uh, with, with the shoulder. Um, and that's, that's key to ensure just a healthy range of motion and to avoid any type of impingement. The other key technique, and we really talk about this, um, we mentioned this a lot in the video of vertical and ver versus horizontal pulling and why we said horizontal pulling was one of our favourites is because of any muscle imbalance. If you have a very overdeveloped anterior deltoid um, and you, you know, you're, you're always in a flexed position doing a lot of pressing movements versus horizontal pulling movements um, then you're, you're going to lessen that subacromial space um, within the shoulder joint uh, because of the overdeveloped anterior deltoid and as such, you're going to increase the potential chances of, um, you know, of impingement of the shoulder. This is particularly true for, for the supraspinatus um, rotator cuff, which can, can become pinched, or a tendon, or even naturally uh, one of the bicep tendons, which can become pinched, as again connected to the, the, the shoulder joint. So it's really important to make sure that you don't have muscle imbalances between, uh, between the front or the rear deltoid or even the mid deltoid. The next exercise, one of my favourites, again, is the lateral raise, um, you know, the lateral raise for uh, the mid deltoid. And you know, you can see a lot in the fitness videos um, explaining when you're coming at the lateral raise to have your thumbs in the in the down position on on the top of the raise uh, to really try to extenuate um, some some pressure. Um, and stress on on the mid deltoid. Now, whether that has particular advantages or not. On building the muscle it's not worth carrying out because that type of orientation again can decrease the subacromial space in the uh, in the shoulder joint and therefore the increase the chances of impingement of the supraspinatus particularly uh, rotator cuff that's where you're going to get problems so what what the, the, the better movement is actually having uh, your thumbs up in the position um, and but just again following the natural plane of motion. We're not robots, we don't go straight to the side. It's following a scaptured plane is really important. Um, and that varies from person to person. So try to try to do that, but don't uh, don't have this movement where you're trying to pour pour cans of drink at the at the top of the range of motion on your lateral raises um, because it can cause uh, problems uh, just because of the orientation. Um, and the potential for impingement of the shoulder. The next one is an absolute classic movement and that's the, the bench press. Um, and it's really key uh, to think about this because, um, you know, obviously people want to, to develop their chest um, and they want to keep putting weight on that, on that bar or any type of pressing movement uh, so that they can increase the overall muscle damage um, on, on the chest to develop their chest. Um, but you've got to remember, being a complex and multi-joint uh, compound movement, uh, people underestimate the, the amount of support that they're getting in that, in that press with their shoulder and their triceps. Um, and if you're just going through the range of motion with a bench press, um, you're not really thinking about your form, you're not really thinking about the stimulation of, of the fibres of the chest, uh, then you're very likely just to be lifting and using that power and that additional strength if you are progressing uh, through the strength of your shoulders and your triceps. So one, that's a problem because it's not developing the chest, which is what you're aiming for. Uh, but two, but that's also causing problem, big problems with your, your uh, rotator cuffs and your shoulder joint. One of the key issues is people having their shoulders on an out, very on an out position when they're, when they're carrying out the, uh, the, the pressing movements. 
Um, so really you're, you're lifting, you're, that primary part of the lift is being really supported by your shoulders. Now I'm not saying that you can't, you're going to carry out the bench press by completely isolating the chest. You just can't do that. Your shoulders are going to support, your triceps are going to support. Uh, but there are, there are certain mechanisms and form that's really important for the, the chest. Not just because you want to try and stimulate the chest, obviously, it's healthy for your uh, supraspinatus particularly, but also um, all your rotated calf muscles in, in preventing uh, particularly actually a strain or even a tear because you're talking about high weight in the bench press. Um, that's what can happen if you um, put too much stress on the shoulder joints and it's not supposed to be in that, in that sort of orientation. So the best thing to do, but we've got probably separate blogs on this um, and separate videos talk about bench press. But ultimately, you want to retract your shoulders, lift your chest down uh, confidently uh, when, you, when you're carrying out the press. Um, don't uh, you know, flare out your shoulders. Again, follow the natural plane uh, of motion uh, and really retract your shoulders. And that, that's key in that type of movement. Um, and again, it, it's healthy for your rotator cuffs. Finally, the, we're going to talk about the upright row and behind the neck um, presses, overhead presses. Um, and I can say for sure now that these two exercises should be avoided at all costs. Um, now that's not to say that they don't build muscle, they don't recruit muscle fibers, because they do. Um, but what I'm saying is that the, 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 the issues that they can cause, or the potential for injury, outweighs any benefits you're going to get from, uh, from muscle development. Remember here, we're in the, the long game, the longevity, we want to be healthy. Uh, and that's what Body Remaster is all about. That being said, there are alternatives. Um, let's talk about that quickly. Let's just look at each one individually first. First of all, the upright row. The problem with the upright row often is the way in which it's conducted. Um, you know, because the trainer will often start with maybe a barbell or, or some dumbbells and lift beyond their chest right up to this position. And this can cause uh, internal rotation not just in general internal rotation, but also the fact that you've got quite a lot of weight here. So that type of movement in terms of the upright row, especially when you do it incorrectly and try and go right up, um, puts a lot, of, a lot of stress and it can cause a chronic, chronic issues um, later on in life um, because it's just not healthy for the shoulder joint. The second exercise, which I mentioned as part of the same group, is behind the neck presses. Now this is a little bit outdated now um, within the fitness community and, and rightfully so because um, I think science and biomechanics have shown it's just not a natural move. When you're, when you're conducting behind the neck presses, first of all, you're fully, you're fully externally rotating here. Um, we talked about external rotation. But it's not only that, you're, you're, you're putting yourself in a compromised position because um, you're under a lot of weight. So you're carrying out external rotation under weight. Um, and it's really going to put stress on your rotator cuff muscles. Not to mention the inherently unsafe position that you are in, um, uh, trying to lift up a lot of weight in this respect. Whatever benefit you're going to get by doing behind the neck presses just isn't worth it. Um, and you know, the normal type of front um, military type pressing um, or variations in the dumbbell press, a bit neutral grip, um, a pronated grip, etc., it can more uh, than, than uh, meet any losses from not being coming out the behind the neck uh, press. So that sums up this video. I, I've, I've deliberately not included what you can do to strengthen your rotator cuffs because I don't want to make the video necessarily too long. Um, but um, please check out the equivalent blog, uh, bodyremaster.com, uh, where we really lay out some of the really important exercises for the rotator cuffs and it really should be included particularly in your warm-up exercises but especially before your pressing movements that's so key i don't do any pressing movements unless i warm up the rotator cuffs it's just part of my routine now um, and that's what i do but i would say almost in any situation um, you know your shoulders are involved in a lot of movements so always make sure that they are part of your warm-up exercises um, and stretches etc Thanks very much once again for listening. I really do appreciate you guys and your support. Um, if you're a subscriber, that's fantastic. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe to it. Um, make a comment in the box. Tell us, tell us any of your experiences of rotator cuffs. Have you had any tears or, or major injuries? Um, you know, have, you, have you overcome them? 
I'd love to hear any issues um, that you've had. Again, a lot of experience based on this, um, so I'd love to hear you. Um, again, um, go on to bodymasters.com and check out some of the blogs uh, that we've got and subscribe to Remastered Unlocked, um, where we've got some great material for everybody uh, to really help you uh, to build, strengthen and tone your body, which is our mission at Body Remastered. Uh, lastly, check out our product page on uh, bodyremastered.com. Um, we're, we're designing ebooks and we continue to design them. Uh, we may, may, have, may have some ready for you to buy if you're interested in some of the topics we have. Uh, we have some more in the pipeline uh, that we will talk about um, in due course. So keep in, keep, in, keep in touch and watch this space. Um, and last thing I want to mention is we talked about uh, we're building an online course at Body Remastered. Uh, called Remastered Unpacked, and that's going to cover everything you want, you need to know about uh, building, strengthening, and toning your body, all in one package, um, and it will cover all the things of plateau, plateau busting techniques, all, all about how to build a really intelligent training program, how to fit psychological skills into your training program, which is unique at Body Remastered. So um, you know, keep keeping watch for this space again um, because we're going to be launching that uh, very very soon. So, fantastic. Thanks very much for your time. Um, hopefully, I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. Bye.